guys, welcome back! So I thought on making a top 10 video games that I've played last year, but uh, man, you already know what games I played during 2018 and the ones that I really enjoyed. So for this video I turn things around and now I present you my top games played not during 2018, but the ones I was addicted to back in 1988. Let's take a look! This is a list of games that I owned back in the day, so in 1988 I was a proud owner of a ZX Spectrum 128K plus 2A and despite having a huge influence on my choices, the arcades are excluded from this list. Where time stood still. After the huge success of the Great Escape video game on the ZX Spectrum, Denton Designs elevated the genre to a whole new level, taking advantage of the possibilities that the ZX Spectrum 128K offered and produced this Where Time Stood Still, set in an hostile world where time seemed to have just stopped. Filled with dinosaurs, cannibals and other hazards, we must take our survivors through this vast landscape, only possible due to the Spectrum's extra memory. Where Time Stood Still drank inspiration from this movie The Land That Time Forgot from 1975 and was initially available for the good old Specky 128K, the Atari ST and MS-DOS. This game was initially intended to be known as the name of the rose, but not being able to acquire the rights for Umberto Eco's novel, the Spanish designer Paco Menendez and Opera Soft were forced to change its title to La Badia del Crimen. Just like where time stood still, La Badia del Crimen, that roughly translates to the Abbey of Crime, was only available for the 128K ZX Spectrum and in Spanish language, so needless to say that it failed to grab commercial success. Even so, I managed to get hold of a copy and three years later the full game was even bundled with the Spanish magazine Micro Obi issue 215 on a cover tape that I still have in my possession. Check my complete history video for more details and curious facts about this incredible masterpiece from the golden age of Spanish software. Rex. This is one of those hidden gems on the system. It has that Metroid feeling, with arcade platform shooting up frenetic action that was published by Martech Games and developed by The Light, a fictional name for a real company known as Creative Reality. In this one, we assume the role of Rex, a rhino obsessed by ecology, with this one and only mission of destroying a fortress or factory that is polluting his own planet. Gameplay is art, but amazingly addictive, and I only wished that there was music playing in the background. The non-linear Metroid-style gameplay is what really impressed me back in the day, because by then I was yet to play around with an NES, so along with the also amazing interior and released a couple of years prior, Rex was where I would immerse myself in such overwhelming new experiences that this unique style of gameplay would provide, if well structured. Savage. Developed by Probe Software and published by Firebird, Savage is an action fantasy platformer with a twist in where we play the role of this mighty warrior that must fight his way through hordes of different enemies in order to save his maiden from the claws of the Dark Guardian. By killing all these enemies, useful weapons will be dropped and treasures can also be collected. The twist is that the three available levels are completely different from one another. The first one is a traditional horizontal scrolling shooter, from left to right, killing everything that crosses our path. Then we move to the second level in this space area style of gameplay, with skulls to shoot and some sort of pillars to dodge. 
In the third and final level, we basically transform into an eagle in a sort of shoot em up style, killing once more everything that moves. Don't forget to shoot also the bubbles, cause these will provide useful power ups. And what about the intro music? Amazing, isn't it? I only wish that it continued throughout the whole game. Target Renegade Target Renegade made me fall in love for the scrolling beat em up genre. It came from Ocean Software bearing Imagine's logo and was one of the first offering a true 128k dedicated version that would play music throughout the whole game. It was also, in my opinion, the first successful attempt on a two player co op beat em up game for home computers. In Target Renegade, we fight our way through Scumville towards a final level confrontation with Mr. Big. And that's pretty much it. No damsel in distress, no president of a big country to save, nothing. Just a final confrontation with that so called Mr. Big. But let me tell you, playing Target Renegade on a ZX Spectrum back in 88 at home felt like the arcade in town had just moved inside my own house. Brilliant! Rock and Roller One of the most entertaining Spanish games I ever played and apparently was inspired by the 1980 arcade game entitled Rally X, which I never had the chance to try cause at that time I was just 5 years old and didn't know what an arcade cabinet was all about. And this type of things were quite uncommon back then around the place I lived in. So in 1988, Toposoft developed this arcade driving and puzzle game, in where we control a buggy trying to collect six pieces in the form of question marks, unveiling an image of a vehicle on the bottom left of the screen. But be careful, cause behind those question marks, other surprises can be unleashed. And besides other hazards, be aware of mines and oil that can destroy and make you lose the control over your vehicle. This simple concept turns this jam into a highly addictive little game. And it practically passed unnoticed. By the way, a funny thing about the cover of Rock and Roller is that in the Spectrum and MSX versions, the letters on the stop sign are inverted. Someone was really wasted or in a bad mood. Last Ninja 2 Man, this distortion guitar tune is just timeless. So, who in late 80s didn't want to be a ninja? With so many martial arts movies coming out, it was perfectly normal that the video game industry of the time would follow that tendency. Set in a 20th century New York City, this action and puzzle adventure title, initially published by System 3 Software for all home computers of the time, has the most beautiful isometric graphics ever seen on a Spectrum game. And it can be sometimes really frustrating with some highly complicated puzzles to solve, but with some persistence we will triumph and defeat once and for all the main villain, Kunitoki. Or maybe not? There was a limited edition of Last Ninja 2 that inside the box offered also a ninja mask and a soft plastic shuriken. Unfortunately, never got my hands on one of those. What an amazing movie it is and one of the most superb adaptations from, again, Ocean Software, the masters in the business. They made a ton of money with this game and the fee that they had to pay for the license was insignificant. As I've mentioned a couple of times, the arcade game from Data East was sub-licensed from Ocean Software and we can witness that just by looking at the marquee of the arcade cabinet in where Ocean's logo is stamped. Quite uncommon back then and it's one of those memories that I'll fondly recall till the end of time. 
The ZX Spectrum game was one of the best selling ever and was number one for a year and a half, even staying in the top 5 from April of 1989 till February of 1991. And the 128K version of the game is the way to go, cause all levels are loaded in one go and has awesome music from Jonathan Dunn that revealed so popular that even Ariston used the Game Boy version on its on and on advert. And on and on. Paris Dakar Released around December, Paris Dakar got me hooked during the following years, trying to reach the finish line in this one-of-a-kind game that randomly generates completely different stages every time you start the race. For that we have this basic but groundbreaking roadbook that includes all the notes and directions for the player to take to safely navigate his way through these mazes till the checkered flag. And we must not forget to reset the partial kilometer counter after every change of direction to get it right. Believe me, the sense of accomplishment in this game is huge and crossing the finish line of every single stage is already a true victory. It unfolds in three stages, being each step an incredible challenge not only in what the roadbook is concerned, but also in relation to the well-being of our vehicle, like the level of water, state of the gearbox and the fuel tank. Along the way there are areas of supply and repair for us to stop, but even with all these precautions, reaching the end of every stage intact and well classified is almost impossible, but achievable. Simply brilliant. R -type. Irem Corporation produced in 1987 this side-scrolling shoot-em-up arcade game whilst the Aliens movie from 1986 directed by James Cameron was still fresh in everyone's minds. The similarity is obvious by looking at the alien creatures from both the game and the movie. Needless to say that R-Type was an instant success on the arcades and a year later by 1988 on all home computers. It is also known as being one of the most difficult games ever made. It needs a high level of strategy to be victorious against the Baidu Empire and the weapon system implemented was something completely new and fresh when the game was released. The detachable pod is our best friend against the enemy and where all the strategy against them resides. An amazing port by Electric Dream Software of a game with the most iconic alien bosses ever created for a video game. Despite also having similar experiences on other own systems over at friends' houses, these were the 10 games released back in 1988 that I've played the most. Also, I would obviously continue to play older 48k titles, but now on my 128k plus 2a, games that I still get back to after all these years like Death Chase. It never gets old. Please tell me down in the comment section below your favorite games from 1988 and on what systems you used to play them. I'm really curious to know. In the meanwhile, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe, to click on that bell icon, to share this video and to support the channel through Patreon if you're feeling generous. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Cheers!